Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch uh, your everyday reality mongerer. That's right. Uh, we're spreading reality, whether it hits you in the face and you don't like it, it's, it's still the truth and you need to be getting yourselves ready for it. I know that a lot of you just, <sighs> can we just talk about nice, sweet, cuddly things? This is just, it's all too much all the time. It is, it's, it's a lot, it's, it's, it's taxing on the system. But let me tell you this, if, if, if talking about this kind of stuff, listening to this kind of stuff that's going on on a daily basis is really that, that strenuous on you, then you're gonna have a really hard time when things really start kicking off. So you better get used to it now. A lot of things are going on. They, they found some wreckage, uh, debris of the F-35 uh, uh, stealth fighter yesterday in South Carolina. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, we can't believe anything our government tells us anymore. It's just like how we tell our children why you shouldn't lie. If you lie, eventually no one's going to believe you. And they're just, even when you're telling the truth, they're not going to believe you. And it's the same thing. Our government lies so often. Absolutely just, it's just, it's like, how do you know if they're lying? They're talking, right? Well, uh, I mean, just yesterday, I think it was uh, the, the DOD um, um, General um, Milley, Miley's uh, office said that they, that the that, that Chinese spy balloon, remember that big Chinese spy balloon months ago, that uh, it didn't collect any data whatsoever, that they've determined that it wasn't able to collect any data whatsoever. I don't think anyone probably believes that. That being said, uh, they claim that they found some wreckage of this F-35 stealth fighter uh, just uh, uh, several miles away from where the pilot ejected and stuff. Could be completely true. It may just be some simple malfunction. Um, and and because it's a stealth fighter, I mean, it, it proved that it does a pretty good job of being a stealth and they had a hard time detecting it. Could be something else to it. Um, problem is, is we'll never know. You and I are, will never know the truth of the story. I mean, it'll just be, you know, one more of these speculative conspiracy theory uh, issues that no one ever really knows and people will probably argue over it. Um, there is, there is, and it appears that, um, you know, there's just a constant buildup of war on many sides. And not just in the traditional China, Taiwan, and or China, uh, yeah, Taiwan and, and Russia and Ukraine, you know, um, Armenia and Azerbaijan, they're, they're kind of going at it. They've, they've launched attacks. And that is going to be another proxy war because Russia's on one side of it and the United States is on the other. So, so there's that happening. Um, th there's just all kinds of unusual movements, uh, you know, different world leaders meeting with other world leaders that you would not typically see uh, that indicate uh, that there may be some... Uh, coming together to, to, to build forces, you know, whether it's one side or the other. Um, lots, of, lots of ship and plane activity around Taiwan. There was a big earthquake uh, in Taiwan yesterday. I mean, that could just be natural or it could have been done, you know, Russia, or excuse me, China has been claiming, uh, not officially, but there's been lots of talk and rumors that all of the bad weather that China has been dealing with, if you've been paying any attention to that over the last year or so, massive flooding and storms and all that kind of stuff that's really damaged a lot of their food production. A lot of China news media is claiming that that's the United States doing that. And honestly, that's not too surprising. In fact, I was talking to my wife. It, I mean, if, if they can manipulate the weather here, then why wouldn't you manipulate the weather uh, against an enemy? I mean, we admit we did that back during Vietnam. Uh, so it's very, very possible, I think. Uh, maybe even likely that we are doing that. And who knows how much of all this... Uh, weather manipulation is done as a, as a type of warfare against each other and not just, you know, the, the, the nation doing it against their own people. We have no way of knowing, but uh, things on the weather front is always weirder and weirder, um, which is, of course, affecting food. And that's kind of where I wanted to go with this. Uh, we've got, obviously, fall and winter's coming on. We're, we're, we're in fall. I mean, we're a few days away from officially being in fall, but most people, you know, first of September is kind of fall kicking off. 
And while some of you are still dealing with very hot weather, most people are starting to feel the cool down. Um, and then, of course, winter comes in. And that, that's always, you know, food isn't as available because it's not fresh. Now you're switching to food brought in from out of season, um, uh, canned processed foods, things like that. There's so many indicators right now that food is, is, is getting in worse condition. Uh, worst condition than it's been over the last three years. I saw that uh, olive oil is is uh, projected to increase over 100%. I've been telling you for the last couple of weeks that uh, many of the projections on beef is about a 30% increase over what it has been by the end of the year. And and the, the trends are already indicating that um, the uh, f uh, futures, beef futures are at the highest they've ever been. Uh, oil prices topped $95 a barrel, which is going to make everything more expensive. Farming, trucking, moving that stuff, uh, everything. Everything is affected by, by oil prices, okay? Uh, whether it's the, the, the plastics that's manufactured from it or the transportation of it uh, in, in many different modes. So every time oil goes up, it's not just that you're paying more at your pump for your fuel that you're putting in but you're going to be paying more for everything else too um we're we're seeing of course this year we've had a lot of drought conditions in certain areas of the country that uh, are critical to food production wheat uh, soybeans things like that even certain areas with corn production aren't looking too good and uh the the projections are is that food inflation is just going to keep getting worse that that's the food and the fuel um, are the two areas that are seeming to do the worst when it comes to inflation uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna keep seeing it going up now are we is there is there something over the fall and winter that looks like it could be uh, the big thing that causes you know food to kind of crumble and 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 go extremely sky high or be massive shortages I'm not saying that there is uh, but there are certainly a lot of things that's directly affecting it. You know, the Panama Canal is having a lot of trouble getting ships through because of lack of water. Uh, so that's slowing down. It's not, you know, restricting it, but it's slowing down, which of course affects everything, not just how fast it gets to the table, uh, but also the, the cost. Every time, you know, when, when a ship, and you guys all understand this, you know, these companies, they have everything timed down to the moment. And if that ship is down there for an extra days or extra weeks, um, it affects the overall cost. And you can't expect these companies to just absorb these costs. It gets passed on to you. And that's why we're seeing exorbitantly, blah, 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 exorbitantly high costs everywhere, food costs. Um, it's, it's really hurting the American people. I mean, it, it, it hurts to go to the store now and buy groceries and see how much you're, you're paying and people are, are, are cutting back. The, the, the trends are showing that people are buying less, more expensive food or nicer food or name brand food. Um, they're, they're really trying to tighten up their budget and their, their spending uh, habits because it's getting ridiculous. This is an SHTF in itself because every time um, or any time food becomes expensive, um, the availability is a problem or the outlook is looking pretty grim. I mean, food is, you got to have it, right? You got to eat food. You, there's, there's no way around it. That's as, as about as simple as it gets. And we know for a fact that one of the very first things that, you know, world leaders throughout all history do to, to manipulate the people is to manipulate the food, the food supply, the food production, the food quality, all that kind of stuff. And we're getting it from every area, not just the, the food supply, uh, but also the food quality. You know, they're, they're, of course, pushing more and more synthetic foods on the market. We're, we're seeing bioengineered foods uh, on just about every label now. I, I, I've seen projections that it's somewhere between 70 and 90 percent of the foods in the grocery store, processed foods in the grocery store, have some type of bioengineered label on it. I don't want to be eating that stuff and, and partly is is because we just don't know. I mean we can make assumptions as to what that means and what it does to us but the fact is is we don't know. And they're putting in all kinds of things that, that are not natural whatsoever. If you just look at the definition of what bioengineered food means, it means it's something that you would not normally find in nature, 
to consume and it's engineered in a lab. Well, if it's not something that's found in nature, then I don't want to be putting it into my body. It's just plain and simple. Uh, so there is a crisis going on and I'm not saying that to, to cause everyone to jump up in fear. We do have a food crisis. Can you right now go to pretty much any grocery store uh, in your area and find food? Absolutely, absolutely. And most of us, even the poorest of us, uh, is able to get enough food to sustain us, right? I mean, that, that's pretty much a base standard in the United States. You can find food, and even if you're really, really poor, you can generally obtain enough food through various means to sustain you. But that doesn't mean that there's not a food crisis going on. There's a food crisis in the fact that it's expensive. There's a food crisis that we're that, that the availability is is getting to the point that um, one little thing could happen and could push us over the edge of panic, and then the availability is is kind of gone very quickly. Look back three years ago, uh, trying to buy a roll of toilet paper or something like that. And when people panic. Uh, the availability dries up very, very rapidly. Uh, and then we've got uh, just the, the unhealthy foods, which is in a lot of ways the worst thing. Uh, we're, we're feeding our bodies with these horribly unhealthy and very possibly um, an, an abomination of, of food that they're, because we don't even know what they're putting in it. This is all critical. You add this to everything else, folks, world wars and economy, and the fact that there's millions and millions of people uh, a year coming across our border. We've been averaging over 7,000 uh, people a day coming across the border. To put that into perspective, myself and others have been talking about that little island over in, in Italy of how many people flooded into that island. Take all those people from Africa that's flooded in that island, and that's the amount of people a day minimal. Minimally, that's the amount of people a day that are crossing our border. Seven, up to 10,000 or more people a day. That's a lot. There's all kinds of videos virtually every day of what's going on. Well, of course, you, you add all those people and, you know, there's problems, there's crimes, there's, there's chaos, there's clashing of cultures and everything, but then there's also a drain upon our system. That's more people trying to be fed, and, and usually they're going to be fed through a lot of government services, which is an even greater drain onto the system. When you put it all together, we are creating a big old bowl of, of a recipe for disaster. That's exactly what it is. And so I've said all of this to get to this final point. <laughs> Don't you love how I do this? It probably annoys the snot out of a lot of you. Uh, and if it does, then you probably should go ahead and subscribe because it keeps you on your toes. You should challenge yourself, even the things that drive you nuts. So if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. But the point is, we need to be taking food seriously. I know that's like the most basic prepper principle is food, right? Like you're not a prepper if you're not putting food away. But a lot of times when we get more advanced into stuff and we've gone for a longer period of time, we kind of forget the basics and we need to always, always, always run back to the basics. Yes, well, there's lots of other things we should be doing. Absolutely. But don't ever forget your basics. You need to keep stocking up. You should go through right now. In fact, I want to encourage um, all of you over the next week or two to go through your food supply and try to figure out, you know, how much of it you have. And there may be stuff that you've bought several years ago and you kind of put away get in there and look and make sure it's still good pop open a random can do a random test see if it's any good you it's possible that something has spoiled and you may have cases and cases of stuff that you think you have for for food and then you know all of it or half of it isn't any good get in there and check things test things uh count it up figure out what you have and then even though costs are really high right now I want to push you hard to be buying more stuff, to be stocking up. And I know some of you are really broke. I hear it from you. And I, I, I'm very sympathetic to that. You know, my family, we're, we're pretty much a paycheck to paycheck family. You know, we, we don't have any real wealth. You know, we drive a 25 year old vehicle. And it's the only one we have. We live in a, all of us in a cabin of less than 500 square foot. I get it. I get it, but you have to keep pushing. You have to set priorities and maybe you take up extra jobs or pick up aluminum cans and, uh, you know, it's for extra money, whatever you have to do to try to stock up more, you need to be doing because winter is coming soon. 
and, and the possibility of things substantially getting worse during winter, I think are pretty good. If you look at the projections and stuff, uh, there's not really a lot of good news being projected uh, for this winter when it comes to all of the chaos going on. You don't want to be caught in the winter in the cold, uh, in panic, and run to the stores, and increased fuel costs, and heating costs, and electricity, and all that kind of stuff. So be taking the time now where things are somewhat in a calm state. You know, people are kind of chilling in the fall. You know, they're, they're, they're burning up and doing stuff in the uh, summer and in the winter time. Right now is kind of a slow time for most people. Take advantage of that and stock up, find some good deals, do some shopping around, uh, maybe sell some things and put that towards preps. Whatever you need to do, you need to be doing it quickly because as I've said before, I think over the next six to 12 months, we're going to see a lot of pretty serious things happen. I'm not saying it's the apocalypse or it's the end of the world, but I think we're going to see some very drastic things happen over the next six to 12 months. Fact is, folks, is we need to be getting our houses in order and taking this very seriously. Getting yourselves prepared mentally, physically, and especially spiritually so that you can ride out the coming storm that, that's headed our way very rapidly. Folks, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.